I have I have been on this spiritual journey for a while now. Um, I didn't like fully awaken and tap into myself until about maybe I'm going to say about like 10, 10 years ago. Um, as a child, I remember my, my, my mom always reminds me that I told her that I was her mother from a, another life. How I knew that at such a young age, I have no idea, but um, it's what, what led me on my path along the way. Um, this road hasn't been always easy for me. And I went through some really, really dark times. And it is because of the divine creator, my strength, my courage to keep going and pushing myself to, to live um, and to thrive and to make something of myself, to make myself self proud. Um, I have been interacting with my singing bowl for about like, I'm going to say like four, four or five years now. Um, I started with the Root Chakra Bowl and um, I have been building my collection ever since. Writing has always been a part of my life since I could write in full sentences. Um, I was the type of person who would come home and write in my journal about my day to day and look over it when I needed to. Um, writing for me has been a way to identify what is going on in my head and to to just listen to the thoughts and um, tune everything out and get in, get in touch with my feelings to know what I'm feeling for the day, the week, um, at that moment in time. Um, writing has helped me to, to, to understand myself on a deeper level. Um, and I go back a lot and, and reread what I wrote to see how 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 I have changed and progressed over the years. Um, I do write a little bit of poetry, but I do do a lot of journal writing, and um, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. Um, I would definitely say that being on a spiritual path is sometimes not easy. And it has its ups and downs, but for the most part, when you stick to it, you can you can really see the growth and transformations. Um, I really didn't understand what it meant to have spiritual deaths and rebirths until recently, um, when I've be become more in awareness of what actually was going on with me and the changes that were was happening and how I was transforming and how I was growing and how I was vibrating higher and just elevate into higher frequencies. I've always had an intuitive gift, but I never really tapped into it because like I said earlier, I have went through a very, very dark phase and I'm just grateful to even be standing here talking to to you and sharing my story um spirit has been asking me to speak up and speak out more and letting me know that my story and the things the my experience is one that uh, people can relate to and somebody who's af who's afraid or don't know where to go can benefit from me so i'm grateful that bronx holistic invited me here today because this is one step closer to for, to for me to fulfill my soul mission here on earth helping others and using my voice to do that um yeah that's that's a little bit about me that's my story <laughs> um so um i'm just trying to try to put some questions in as i'm 
still slightly distracted. Can you explain okay. more about the connection between writing and meditation? Because people think that meditation is only one way. So can you expound on that, how writing can be part of meditation? Well, writing allows you to gain clarity and it allows you to really listen to to the ori, the mind, the brain, and really listen to yourself. And in that, sometimes you may be writing about your day to day, but then there's other moments when you free write and you can receive downloads and messages from spirit that you can refer back to when you need them the most. And I find myself doing that a lot lately. Um, and it just, it just gives you a quiet moment with you with spending time with yourself. Um, and the connection between meditation and writing is, is that it's, it's a chance to connect with not only your higher self, but you can connect with your inner child. You can heal your inner child. You can talk to your higher self. You can um, allow yourself to see your shadow self and to see the areas that you need to change or that you need to work on or just how to connect all three together like working with your inner child working with your shadow self and working with your higher self because all three play a major part in who you are in this life and we often try to cover up or hide those parts of ourselves especially your shadow self and they are very important to your life um because sometimes you need to um you need to express in your shadow self. You need to live out in your inner child because that's what keeps you vibrant. That's what keeps you alive. That's what allows you to set boundaries when you need to. It allows you to just embrace all of who you are and, and all of its pureness and be authentic and transparent with not only yourself, but with other people. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I've always had this issue with the mute button. <laughs> so <laughs> you mentioned shadow work. What is your definition of shadow work? And what do you feel is the best way to go about doing shadow work? Well, my definition of shadow work is um, just looking, looking within and um, defining those parts that you that you hide within yourself or helping you to, to unblock certain areas that you have, have, have blocked out because of past trauma and past experiences, whether it be this life you're living now or things from your, your past life. Um, shadow work to me is just looking in the mirror and just being very honest open and transparent with you it really doesn't have to have to do with anybody else but you can share your those shadow parts of yourself with other people but shadow work is 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 all about you it's all about self it's all about just being completely honest open and transparent with self so that you can grow and develop not only your gifts but your mind and just maneuver through life and make better decisions and um just just allowing yourself to trust you more um for me when i do shadow work um it's i find myself asking like I find myself asking a lot of questions. Um, sometimes I use prompts that um, that someone else has that I found online or someone else recommended or shadow work can be you just looking yourself directly in the mirror and just having a real and honest conversation with yourself and and that you can feel yourself like shutting and you can feel the the shift 
tr- um, happening, you see, you start to see the transformations. You might even cry while you're sitting there looking in the mirror. You might even cry while you're sitting down, writing down, answering the questions because shadow work is really about just digging deep within yourself and and just healing those parts of you that those parts of you that that you might regret that you might fear that you might question so that's that's what shadow work is for me And here I am talking and the mute button's on. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I was just thinking about this today, how, and having a conversation the other day with a friend of mine, healing is not always pretty. So it's- you see, you know, <laughs> on IG, you see all these beautiful reels of women in these beautiful sunlit rooms surrounded by flowers or they're burning incense and making everything look so sweet. And it's like, that's not what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you kind of, can you kind of expand on like what healing is and why um, you know, can we share more of the of the quote unquote ugly side of it? Shadow work can get very, very uncomfortable, and there is nothing pretty about it because it's you facing your true your true self. It's you tapping into those emotions that you have may may become numb to. I know for myself, like I have. I I have over the years become numb to a lot of uh, emotions. And if I'm being really authentic and honest, like it really took for me to, to, stop, to stop smoking and, and self-medicating to really start to address and feel those emotions that I try to hide and fight and resist because I want to be so strong and I and I and I don't want to show too much emotions or I don't want to express myself because I don't want to cause conflict which can cause suppression which is suppression of emotions and it can cause like this ease in your body it can cause pain and just you you have to let it go. Like it's it's not always gonna it's not always gonna be pretty. It's not sunshine and flowers like people make it to be. It gets really 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 ugly sometimes, and sometimes it gets scary because you might not know that you had all that pen, all those pent up emotions inside of you. So, um, yeah, shadow work definitely <laughs> is it incense burning, incense and sage. It's it's. It requires it requires honesty. It requires authenticity. It requires transparency within self. And um, I know I still have work to do, but if if I look back from where I was um, as a teenager and w- wanting to end my life because I felt like. I just couldn't bear life to where I am now and just learning how to love myself and to acknowledge myself and just just being able to acknowledge that I'm worthy of, of being here and living and that, I, and that I do have a purpose even when it feels like I, I, do, I don't sometimes or even when you don't know which way to turn. How important is transparency? Transparency is very important because it's important because if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't expect to really be honest with other people and you really can't expect other people to be honest with you. And transparency allows you to let people see all the different sides of you and in doing so you might be assisting someone else on their journey who may be struggling with the same thing so um 
uh, social media for me is people show you what they want to show you, but they don't really show you the work that they had to go through to get to those points. So for me, I feel like I try to be authentic and transparent about my experiences, about what I'm feeling, because I know that there is somebody out there who is looking for a way out or looking for uh looking for a way to to begin to heal and looking for a way to just show the world who who they are and share all sides of their self. So transparency is like on the top of the list. Because again, if you can't be transparent with yourself, how do you expect to be transparent with other people? And how do you expect other people to be transparent with you? Because like attracts like. So how, you know, someone says, what is healing or go heal? Like, what, what does that mean? You know, I, of course, I kind of have an idea. But what would you say, like, when people say that now healing quote unquote, seems to be quote unquote the thing to do which I don't have a problem with I think that's great if people are talking about healing and in conversations people may say well I think maybe you need to go heal but what does it mean to heal and what's like the what's the goal of healing like what's the end result um healing for me is finding finding forgiveness learning to face your fears, healing is is letting go of the traumas that you might have experienced growing up in your adult in your adult life. Healing is I wouldn't say accepting, but just being a, a more aware that yes, you you went through those things, but those things you might or might not you might had to go through to learn a lesson healing is about growth healing is about expansion healing is about learning to love you and all that and loving you and all that you have to give to this world loving all the parts of you even the the most darkest ugly parts that you might dislike about yourself those might be the parts that other people enjoy or or like about you. Those parts you try to try to hide are the parts that some people need. So healing is definitely a never-ending process um, because you can be healing from a loss, you can be healing from a relationship, you can be healing from 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 stuff that you did to your to your own stuff self so, or just the thoughts that's in your mind is, is learning how to control your world, um, learning how to navigate and transmute your energy and to rid yourself of those negative thoughts and feelings that you might have, even though they're always going to be there, but just being able to acknowledge them and say, yes, that is how I'm feeling right now, but what can I do to make this situation better? Or what can I tell myself to to show myself that I'm listening and that I hear it and I love me and I'm necessary, I'm needed, I'm worthy, I'm enough. Like it's it's a never ending process. Like it never stops. I, I, I think we you'll be healing until the day you transition to the other side. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. So what would you say is the role of like the tools, like the tarot, the oracle? What is the role of those tools? Um, the role of those tools is really to, to assist you to see where you are currently, to maybe tell you what things you have to let go of in order to grow and move forward it can also tell you what is standing in your way of achieving or getting to the things that are truly meant for you because you know abundance is our birthright and um tarot and earth 
Oracle can just help you navigate through your day to day and just and just put a uh, an idea or or put an idea of where you are at in your path as of right now. Um, it's just it's just a, a tool to assist you because at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you're going to listen to what is being told through those cards or not. So um, I, I don't know what it is lately, but I've been seeing a lot of posts on my social media that these things are bad. And it, it just seems like all of a sudden, like a raft of these posts, like condemning people using um, the tools and, you know, um, you know, especially when I see people say things like, oh, meditation is bad. And I always think, you know, meditation is a way to connect to your soul. So I kind of feel like a good response would be, okay, so how do you connect to your soul without, you know, meditation? Like why, why the condemnation of that? Well, I definitely agree with you there. And I, I feel like the people who are condemning it probably haven't connected with their higher self. And I'm a firm believer that you can't let you can't hear the divine creator as I call him himself, whatever name other people might call the higher power, God, the universe, whatever you might call him. You can't connect with the being that is above us all being surrounded constantly by people. You can't connect to yourself if you are if you never give yourself space to quiet your mind and just to listen and you will find yourself numbing your thoughts with alcohol, with drugs, with just constantly being around people or stuff that's detrimental and that can in the long term cause more harm than good rather than just going in and looking within and tapping into your soul. Um, we all have that ability to do it. And um, I feel like meditation is is very important because we are constantly thinking and thinking and thinking, when do you give your mind time to just be quiet and be able to um, organize your thoughts to see like what's coming up for you and why those things are coming up for you? That's a, a, a good point. The, you are constantly, constantly thinking. And it's like, I remember when I was starting out in meditation and getting to the point where, oh my God, there's no thought. Like, wow, this is amazing. So, <laughs> like, and, and then realizing me saying that, like, is a thought, but I mean, like, no, um, you know, just realizing that there is actually a space. It does exist where, like, the thoughts, you know, don't don't um, exist. So, yeah, that that's a really that's a really good point. So, I want to say to you, we'll ask you, what would you say is meditation magic? Meditation magic is just being able to connect to the spiritual realm and changing the timeline that you are on or just um just reassuring reassuring yourself of who you are um and downloading or receiving information from your from your spirit guides um meditation magic is is it can happen through sound it can happen through music um, it can happen through dancing. It can happen through just sitting quietly. It can happen when you're walking. You can walk and meditate. Like um, it can happen when you plant your feet in the earth. Like so, there's like so many forms of meditation magic. You just have to find what works for you and connect with that source and and just allow yourself to be one with the universe in, in order to receive the information that is specifically meant for you or just to sit there and just 
um, say affirmations in your head because sometimes when I meditate, I find myself just repeating affirmations like I am loved, I'm worthy, I am optimistic, I'm open-minded, I'm creative. And then you might get that quiet mind. Like it's just, is meditation matters. It's just finding ways to find ease, finding ways to get through those hard, those hard spots in life, to overcome the dark places, to heal, to find love within yourself and to open your heart. Um, the power of an affirmation is just speaking life into yourself is so important to speak life over yourself like um because words are spells and people don't understand the power of the tongue like it is powerful and mighty and you can you can you can speak a life that you don't want, even jokingly, by the words that you say. So it's becoming more mindful of what you're saying to yourself, what you're telling yourself every day. Um, dark places inside of you, inside of us, I would say, is um, those moments of despair, those moments of not knowing what to do, those moments of anxiety, those moments of worries, those moments when you want to inflict harm to yourself, those moments when you feel like the world is unbearable to, to go through and you just can't take it anymore. Um, dark places, it comes when you might be grieving a, a, a loved one or you might be grieving uh, an old relationship and just not knowing to accept it, knowing how to accept it, should I say. Um, dark places is um, lack of faith within yourself, um, uh, lack of belief in your capabilities and your powers and uh what what you can achieve <laughs> that's 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 really that's really a dark dark places is overthinking even though sometimes you might overthink and be correct about certain situations, but you can overthink yourself out of something that might be beneficial to you in the end. Um, dark I'm sorry. Place. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I was, <laughs> the mouse was stuck and I'm trying to get it over. <laughs> but I was so like, amazing. oh my gosh. <laughs> but um, yeah, because when you said dark places, um, I, I was thinking, yeah, I, I'm thinking the places, not so much like, you know, we're feeling grief or whatever, but the places where we don't feel loved and we don't feel worthy and powerful. Yeah, those places where you don't feel seen and you don't feel like you're heard. When you feel neglected, <laughs> when you don't feel understood or overstood, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and sometimes like um, I I feel that's some that's something that we deal with often. That's like I say central to the human condition, learning yeah. to value yourself. Um, I said to someone the other day, and I have those moments where the voice comes up that tries to like say, who do you think you are? I have to say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dark places is is those voices in your head that tell you 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 can't you can't do something when in reality you you wasn't given the thought for it. Um, for no reason, the ideas was put into your head. Um, dark places can dark places is 
comes from doubt. It comes from worry. It does come from lack of love. It does come in feeling abandoned. It does feel come from those those places when you feel like how you feel doesn't matter or what you feel doesn't matter. Like you're not seen, like you're not being heard. Like you can't speak up for yourself. Um, not knowing where to go. Dark places can come from lack. Um, I feel like it, it also is like uh, conditioning. And it, and it stems from, from childhood. It usually starts from childhood. Some of it can be genetic. It can be things that your, your parents or your parents' parents passed on to them and now they passed on to you. Um, it can come from lack of confidence within self. Um. That's that's something I was going to say, like the conditioning, like where that voice, you know, where that voice comes from, like when you first hear that very super critical voice, like what's your first memory of it and how, you know, that it gets kind of ingrained in us. Well, my first memory of being in a dark place is remembering just being in my room as a little girl and I find myself just banging on banging my head on the wall and I'm saying my saying to myself out loud like I hate myself I don't want to be here I hate myself I don't want to be here and it's a voice that I still fight to this day um I have learn how to quiet the voice but it's still something I, I struggle with every day I'm fighting that little girl who who felt like she wasn't worthy who felt like she wasn't good enough who feel who felt like she wasn't deserving of being here and and just wanted to be eliminated from this earth not knowing that I had a greater purpose Um, it also stemmed from my environment. It stemmed from the things that I saw growing up. Um, I come from a, a, a family of, of, uh, of addictions in different forms and just watching that as, as a little girl, um, I fought myself and and said to myself, I I I don't I don't want to be that, but everything around me told me I was. And it made me really, really hate myself from a little girl. That that's so much it's it's such a reason why I say we need safe spaces. Where we we absolutely have to have safe spaces for people to be able to express that to to release that to yeah to to I guess kind of vent it out it's it's so important it's so important that's why I say I I love you know our stories I fully believe our stories heal you know um when I hear people say their stories I just applaud their courage for being able to share because what I found is that such beautiful things come out of horrific backgrounds, you know, horrific um, stories and experiences, such beautiful things come, come out of it. And, and I just, I just applaud people and their courage for opening their mouth and, and saying it because I, sometimes I feel like eh, there's some things I don't even want to tell God, but people, <laughs> you know, come on and they just share. And, and I know that you know, they feel comfortable sharing that. And, and that's a sacred thing. It, it, it really is. It really is something that I, that I honor and respect. Yeah. Um, um, 
I feel like as as a as a little girl, I had to I had to grow up quicker than quicker than I would have liked to because of the lifestyle that my mother was living at the time. And um, one of the, the 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 memories that still play in my head is just seeing my mother come in and being very very inebriated and laying on the floor in the the hallway. And my other family members that was living us at, at the time had to take it to the room. And me as a little girl walk, walking in my room and seeing her so inebriated that she's laid, laid out sleeping on her floor. So it's those kind of images that kind of stick with you as, as an adult. And those are the things that you try to try to fight and, and try to overcome and, and, and just make yourself a better person. But it also causes turmoil within because of what you see and you I never wanted to be a product of my environment I never wanted to to I never wanted to be a product of my environment but it it somehow as a teenager I began to slip into that and I fought so hard to come out of that like it, 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 it's it's hard <laughs> this journey is definitely not easy and it really isn't sun sunshine rainbows and and smiles all the time it you really have to go through stuff to 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 get to those to a higher place to get where you are comfortable within yourself to get to the moments where you love yourself, where you cherish yourself, where you honor yourself. And I believe, and I'm a firm believer, and I see it more and more by healing myself. I am in turn healing the people around me because whether or not I know it, they're watching me. And, you know, you said um, product of your environment and um, are you products of our environment and the choices that we make? You know, they say, when you know better, you do better. And I, yeah, sometimes you know better and I still don't, you know. <laughs> oh, so I, I can't say that that's the, that's the, the definitive answer, but like, um, it's, it's a start. Right? It's a start. But I would say that, um, you know, for all, you know, not to say for all the light bringers, because that's that's what I call, you know, so many of the people that I en encounter. They are light bringers because they've been through the they've been through the dark. You know, it's it's a special kind of courage, you know, that you all um, um, you all have. So um, um, I'm just trying to see. There are some people watching, and you know, on Facebook, and they're like. Um, I see some loves and some likes, so that's really awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you all for <laughs> tuning in and watching. This alone took a lot of courage for me mm. to even um, be able to sit here with you and share my story because I am a person who don't really like to have people in my business. But again, like I said earlier, Spirit hasn't really been pushing me to share myself and um, mm. telling me that, of course, not everyone is going to be happy with with the story, my story that I share, because they are part of it, and they might not be happy with those parts of themselves. But I can't keep being quiet because somebody somebody needs to hear it. My story is a testimony. Mm. Mm. So you're saying that um um people would be disappointed like disappointed how like because, because I grew up in one of those households where what happens in the house stays in the house <laughs> <laughs> that mm. kind of thing when I say disappointed mm. that okay so what 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 happens Okay, I can't really speak. Okay, so what happens in the house 
stays in the house. Right. So it's like now if you're saying things, it, it it's like because you're like working on yourself and healing yourself, like people have a problem with that. Yeah, I've I've lost people along the way. I've um I I I don't know, like I feel like people look at me differently. People say that that I've changed, but I'm like, aren't you supposed to change? Like I'm I'm still there. Like I I still know how to have fun. I still know how to share those other those other silly crazy sides of me, but I, I I tend to put spirituality first because that's that has been the, the the tool that has guided me and helped me get through those dark times. Who 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 those? That's what helped me to grow to love myself, like getting in tune and connected with the with the spiritual realms. Just talking talking to to the divine creator just talking to my ancestors crying my heart out to them and just spilling all my emotions and and letting them know that I can't take it and they they see they're watching they're always there yep yep your mic is on mute <laughs> <laughs> tell you I, I tell you me and this mute <laughs> button I tell you so so it's like people want you to suffer in silence they want you to stay stay where you stay where you were and I wonder why do people feel so intimidated by that when you start to grow I feel it's because either they're they're staying the same or they aren't willing to make the necessary changes in order to heal and to elevate and to be authentic and transparent with themselves. Authenticity can be, ooh, I mean, ooh, I'm having a flashback. I, like I remember to a time where I didn't know who I was and I would literally sit down like, who am I? Like, am I supposed to act a certain way or or be a certain way? Like, I literally didn't know who I was until I, I don't remember how, I guess, as I got older, it was like, this is me. I don't have the answer, but I know how I, you know, what I'm comfortable with. So, but other people, it's like, you know, it's like they attack. <laughs> when you start, oh, when you start thinking differently, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, they definitely like go go on the attack. But then I, I read something that said, um, you know, they only attack the they they don't attack the the peasants. They try to attack the queens. <laughs> yes, I definitely agree with you there. I also feel like it has a lot to do with the fact that people aren't willing to to do the work. One, they aren't willing to look in the mirror because. Um, I feel that at the end of the day, like we are all mirror reflections of each other. So something that you might not like in me might be an area that A, you need to work on or is triggering, triggering you because of something that happened in the past or something that you something that comes from yeah something that comes from your childhood or something an area that you need to grow from or maybe it might be a lesson that you need to learn that you're not ready to learn mm -hmm. okay true so um okay so where are you located what services do you offer and like how can you help people <laughs> Well, I am located in Harlem and um I I I don't offer services um unless I'm called to do so is how I ask for my gifts because taking on people's energies can be a lot and I I kind of can feel their energy or their energy kind of sit with me and I end up, you know, like feeling all of what they feel and it can become a lot. But for the most part, I have 
done um, meditations where I have uh, guided people to connect with a transition loved one or to help a transition, help a loved one transition through meditation with my singing bowls. I offer that service um, strictly donation based. Um, I do, and I have read um, tarot for myself and a few family members. Um, I am a candle maker. Um, I make candles, which are geared towards the chakra, self-love and uh, attracting money or abundance to yourself because everything is not about material and abundance comes in many forms um but just um mood boosters to something to help boost your mood i offer candles for vitality and yeah <clears throat> And you said you're located in Harlem. Do you also have a website? Are you ever, um, you know, um, are, are you ever at a physical location? I am not at a physical location. I do offer my med my um, donation-based um, singing bowl services on um, Candily. Um, I do now officially accept payments for meditations as far as helping you connect with a transition loved one. And um, my candles, um, I, you can DM me for that. I I'm working on building a website and that will be coming soon. Um, oracles, um, I can do a distance or I can meet you in a place that you feel more comfortable preferably somewhere in nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about um, um, communicating with those who have transitioned? Um, well, communicating with those who have transitioned requires you to um, be open to it, one, and just allowing yourself to trust the process and to let go any fear you might have. And um, um, I talk to my ancestors with my pendulum and um, I connect with them through um, my singing bowl and, and meditation. Um, for myself, I usually use my pendulum, but when helping other people, I just guide them through a meditation with, with words and sounds. Um, so how long have you been doing that working um, with the, the singing bowls to do um, communication um, through the veil? Well, um, I just made the discovery that I can do it last year. My friend's, um, my friend's mom, uh, brother-in-law, he was in the hospital and I was sitting in the bathroom, um, don't question it, but being in the bathroom where surrounded by water is where I usually collect a lot of downloads because water is, is it flows and it is very connected to the, the spiritual realm. But um, I just got an intuition to grab her and with my singing bowl. And I didn't know, I didn't know that I didn't know I could do it. And um, <clears throat> I grabbed her and I asked her if she was open to it. And I just sat down with her and I began to try my singing bowl. And I told her to allow herself to go where he was. And at the time he was at the hospital and I told her to, um, to talk to him, to have a conversation with him. And um, <clears throat> when we finished the bowl, um, the meditation, she she let me know that um, she did connect with him and um, she that he told her that he was afraid, that he was scared. And she basically in the meditation told him that he didn't have to worry. And um, when we was out at Pride, she received a phone call that he had transitioned. Um, then 
recently I had um I had someone very close to me transition and I found her and um during her services uh something led me to to grab my bowl I just follow my intuition and um at the at the um transition services i guided her family into a uh, meditation to go back to the last memory they could recall with her and from that um my mother's friend she lost her son who was stabbed in the heart and um she did a memorial service for him and she um she asked me to perform the my service at the memorial and I I got it her and her family to connect with him and also remember the last memories that they that they shared so as a way of lifting the weight of grief and just allowing them to go to a happy place with that that lost loved one to be able to to laugh and smile with them again so it's really something that I just discovered it um, about myself and that I had the, the abilities to do. Um, but I look forward to really listening to spirit and following this gift that he has, that, that has been, been provided to, for me, to me and using it to really just, uh, assist others. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's, that's powerful. That is Wow, that's really, 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 really powerful. Um, and and so this is something that has has just has just started. Wow. Yes. Um, I have a comment here on Facebook. Um, you're not alone. Most of our community is like that. We're not supposed to air our dirty laundry in public and just suffer in silence. I applaud your strength to, to share. And thank um, you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It it um it makes me know that I am in alignment and I am doing something right. <laughs> because I question that within myself and that's what makes it hard for me to speak about those personal traumas and things that I went to and allowing myself to be vulnerable but spirit has really really been push pushing me to allow myself to be vulnerable and share myself more so it means a lot a lot to hear that from someone else and and I definitely wanted to say um you know you talked about water <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know, you know, well, I mean, I guess I do kind of know what it is, but yeah, it's like, you know, in the bathroom, in the shower, it's like, all, you know, stuff starts coming, you know, like ideas and, um, you know, ideas and thoughts, like even, even this, this Transformation Thursday, like I heard it one time, like, yeah, then I heard it a <laughs> second time. I was like, okay, no, we're going to listen because we don't want to be spanked. <laughs> <laughs> because we heard what happened, we hear stuff and something comes to the mind like, yeah, and we don't listen. So now that's that's why I have the transformation Thursday because that came through. But definitely that that water element, and I'm getting like a lot more, a lot more um respect for that. So so thank you. But it seems like what you're saying is really resonating with people. Um, so I I did have a question. How how do you transmute shame? How do you transmute shame, feelings of shame? Well, I I just show up and and just allow myself to to be me. And um and I I have always been the type of person who parts of me care what people thought, but a, but a bigger part of me really really don't care what people think of me because people are gonna people going to have something to say whether you're doing good or bad whether you're doing something right or wrong people are always going to always going to talk about you people are always going to have something to say but again that is just a mirror reflection of who they are and it speaks nothing of who you are because um um it's it's something that can just like quicksand 
you know, you just get in it and you just like can't move. Like <laughs> it has you in such a grip. So um, it's like, um, it, it's, it's kind of like fear, I would say that we make it to be so much bigger you know, than, than what it is. Yeah, the, the thought that I, I, that came to mind when you said shame is shame comes a lot from people pleasing. It's a part of people pleasing because you want to make everybody happy. But what about you? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute now. Hmm. So, hmm. so it's like, you don't want to rock the boat. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're drowning. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, people pleasing. Mm. Mm. So when, um, so when something happens to you, it's more about putting up a front instead of like you know you don't want to bother people with with what's going you know with what's going on with you. Right. Mm -hmm. but but then um um it's like people aren't thinking about you as much as you think they're thinking, they are. About, they're <laughs> thinking about you so <laughs> it, it just becomes this really um insidious circle um, um circle you know and yeah like, you get you get trapped in because um you know, I've heard people say, oh, I can't, I can't say that. I'm so ashamed. I'm so embarrassed. And it's like, you know, but the victory is the fact that you're even like alive or you came, you know, you're, you came through or you're able to even speak about it. But I guess we just get trapped up so much in, in the story. We don't see any kind of, of victory in it. Wow. I, I just, I just feel like your experiences are lessons um that help you get to where you are now and wherever what wherever you might be on your path and it is also is also a way to just allow you to just be free to be free and to be totally happy within yourself So, so let go of the shame and, but, but what if you're challenged in, in, in being happy? Like, um, what if you, for example, like, don't know how to be happy or, or to be happy for yourself? Be ha you can be happy for other people, but not for yourself. So how do you deal with that? Um, I just, I just feel like you just need to deeper and you need to go back and like channel your inner child and find those moments where you was most happy and and fit fit now. Like it requires you tapping into your digging deep into your inner child. Um because if you can be happy for other people, why can't you be happy for yourself? And um sometimes that's how we block our blessings. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Block blocking our blessings. Okay. Okay. Mm. Because I, I just I just feel like um, speaking from personal experience, sometimes we get caught up in worrying about um, what other people are doing and how and what's not happening, what's going wrong for you, that you can't see the things that's going on. Oh, wait, your audio was really breaking up. <laughs> yeah, I'm really losing your audio. It's super squeaky. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, now it's gone. I can't. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's kind of staticky. <laughs> I have the Wi-Fi on. Oh, yeah, that's my... fine. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I just um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, we're speaking on um, on um, shame and being happy for others and not yourself. Um, I I just I just feel like how can you you have to be happy with yourself first because at the end of the day you have more to offer into the, this world than you know and because people don't really show you um how they got to the point where they are you you have to allow yourself to be happy where you are you have to allow yourself to acknowledge where you are in your path you have to learn just how to love yourself a little more because we pour oftentimes people pour more into other people than they do in themselves and wonder why their cup is empty. Mm, yeah. Yeah, like they say on the airplanes, put the mask over your own face first. Um, okay, so for the people who are just watching, do you want to just kind of reintroduce your yourself so they know who you are? Well, again, my name is Layla. My friends call me Diva. I am 32 years young. Um, I have been spiritually intuitive to since a child, but I have more so begin to tap deeper into myself and awakening like over the past decade or so. Um, I have been chiming my singing bowl in meditation for the past about five years now um and um i do oracle and tarot readings for myself uh and i have done so for others as well um and i i introduced nana's touch candles um and i believe it was 2019 um i am a healer a manifester a role model um a hermit as well <laughs> and i'm just on a spiritual path to growth and elevation and uh reaching my highest self okay thank you thank you for sharing and um your website and social media profiles please my social media on instagram is diva lay D I V A L A I 914. I do not have a website as of yet, but I will be ha I will have one soon. You can also find me on in on Instagram at Nana's Touch Candles. Um and Lay L A I Patterson P A T T E R S the one. Okay, thank you very much. And do you have any um, parting words for everyone today? Just um, some kind of message you'd like to leave people with? I would say you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. Um, you are worthy and you are enough. And you matter, your voice matters, and it is important to speak up and out. Um, because people people need to hear your story. You never know who's watching and who you may be inspiring or, or motivating. So just continue to live authentically and transparently because you can't watch what the Joneses is doing because you don't really know how they got it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> that is true you don't know <laughs> uh, that's really that that is that is so true that is so very true you don't know how they got it you don't know their 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 background story um you know uh I remember a while ago, I had a, a friend who um, I would say, okay, it's summertime, let's go to some of these outdoor festivals. And she said, she she felt a way going there because she said, I see all those happy couples and I feel a way. And I said, let me tell you something, you have no idea 
what's <laughs> really going on. You don't know if that man said to that woman, you know how to act when you're out here, right? Or if that woman was is bullying the man or you you have you have no idea if they're two sociopaths that that just got together. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you 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 don't know. You know, I just always say, you know, just um when you meet people, just try to be kind because you don't know what people are going through. But yeah. at the same time, don't look at people and think that everybody's got it better than you. Um, I would just say to just live transparent transparently and as authentically as possible um and again you never know who's watching you never know who you inspire and you just just know that your story is important absolutely absolutely so with that, I definitely want to thank you so much. I, and I truly appreciate you um, saying yes. And I say, hey, you know, I need that. So thank you for, for, <laughs> jumping in, for jumping in. And it's it's the synchronicity for me, you know, that you're saying that you've been guided to put yourself out there more and, and for sharing. So and someone, uh, this, there's some comments here on Instagram. Someone is saying, um, they ag agree with what you're saying. And yes, sharing stories indeed. Yes, that, that's very important. So see, yeah, it's oh, such a beautiful share. Um, yeah, so people are definitely resonating with your story. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. I thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. And it puts me one step closer to keep staying in alignment and being obedient to spirit. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so honored. I feel very honored. <laughs> Thank you so much. For everyone watching, um, again, this is um, Transformation Thursday. That happens Thursday, I don't know, 7.15, 7.20, 30. I don't know. Just, <laughs> just, just watch the Instagram and just watch Facebook. I'll, just turn I'll your notifications on. <laughs> right, it, exactly. Just just turn notifications on. I'll I'll tag you. Like it, it's going to be happening, you know, sometime on on Thursday. And um, uh, again, this um, transformation Thursday is something that you know came came through me, and I and I had to listen. So um, thank you for for being here. Um, I know next week we have our speaker who will be addressing his um his journey of um prostate cancer so I will be sharing the link um, for that shortly and just let me just say my commercial Sunday August 13th in the Bronx is the womb chat at the Bronx Cold Lab on White Plains Road at 222nd Street Miss Judith from Rock Collage and I are bringing the womb chat to the Bronx and so we'll be healing the womb with the five elements so you know, you, um, you can follow my Instagram. You see, it's my cover photo on Facebook. So um, please reach out if you're interested in participating or um, registering. And we will we will share the not so pretty side of healing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here. And I'm grateful I got a chance to use my voice and share my story. And I hope... I encourage and inspire somebody today. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you for joining us. And like I always like to say to everyone, if no one has told you, remember that you are truly a spark of the divine. Okay, thank you everyone. And I'll see you next Thursday, seven-ish. <laughs> thank you. Good night. You're welcome.